Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. Thank you once again for joining us here on Truth in History. We are still talking about one of the greatest prophecies, if not the greatest prophecy, the Messianic prophecy found in the book of Daniel. And this prophecy that we are talking about has so many ramifications. And I want to welcome again our friend Robert Karingola, who has written a book that I would like to encourage everyone to acquire, to purchase this book from this ministry. The book is called just simply 70 Weeks. And this will be a real eye-opener. Now, as when you order this book, we will also send you another book uh, to go along with it. And it's called The Origin of Futurism and Preterism. Now, why are we talking about this subject? That's the question. Why are we talking concerning this subject? Because it is extremely important to understand. Because there is so much misinformation, Robert, misinformation, just wrong information concerning the 70 weeks of Daniel. And when you, when you don't have a proper biblical understanding of the 70 weeks of Daniel, you either go in the ditch on the left side of the road or you go in the ditch on the right side of the road. But we are not just in the business of selling books. That's not our purpose just to make money. Because if you realize what it took to publish this book, um, we're not getting rich on books. I can assure you that. But our purpose is to share the proper biblical understanding of the greatest messianic prophecy found in all of Holy Scripture. And that's found in Daniel chapter 9 called the 70 weeks. And Robert Karangola is with us here again, and he is going to begin to, to in detail, show us and explain to us this great, this great truth. Oh, oh yeah. I, I was wondering after the first episode, uh, what we revealed in the first episode, you I think we still have a lot of friends out there in the ministry that yeah. <laughs> maybe heard that information for the first time. And uh, I believe the pastor, Pastor Jennings, is going to be reading. Uh, we, we made an emphatic point of, of the difference between the Futurist School, the Preterist School. We identified the authors. We talked about the Counter-Reformation. We uh, talked a little bit about the Reformation and what was uniting them and stuff, but a, a great theme and a great key to understanding the prophets in the Word of God is the year for the day principle. That's right. I mean, uh, we wrote about, well, I mean, we didn't write it, well, I did. We, we talked about Ribera attacking uh, the 70 weeks. Another man came along right behind him, uh, Bellarmine, that just made war on the year for the day, because they knew what was happening with the year for the day. And, and Pastor, if you'd read that for us, please, out of, out of Ezekiel. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter number four, you know, this is where the prophet is being told by the Lord the destiny of Israel and the destiny of Judah. And he has him lying on his side, he, the Lord told Ezekiel to lie on your side for 390 days on the left side to bear the punishment concerning Israel. 
And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read Ezekiel chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it. According to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon it, thou shalt bear their iniquity. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity according to the number of the days. You notice it said, I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity according to the number of the days. 390 days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. Verse 6, And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Yeah. And, of course, that's a, that's a great prophecy and a great understanding of how a lot of people don't realize that there's a language of the prophets in the Word of God. The, not only codes like a day for a year, because look, look, what's, what we've already alluded to here is in, when it comes to Daniel's 70 weeks or the 490 day years, the first 483 years of the prophecy, everybody bows to and they all know it's a day for a year. Absolutely. And, uh, Jew, Gentile, whatever you want to call anybody, I mean, this is why they were stirring at the time of Christ. Are you here? Should we look for another? You know, they, that's right. they all that's knew right. it was the time. It was the time. They, they, that's why Jerusalem was in such a frenzy and they were there from all nations and they were looking for their Messiah because they understood Daniel 9, they That's understood right. the day for the year, and it was epic in its, in, its, in its consequences. Daniel is the sister book to Revelation. You know, what about all these other divine time measures we have in there? We've got 42 months. We've got 1,260 day yeah. years. Times time and the dividing of a time. Ten days of Smyrna. Three and a half days of the witnesses. All these things... That, that are, again, used in the prophetic language, the metaphors, the allegories, they, the futurists say, well, all right, we'll bow with you on, on Daniel. But in the book of Revelation, you know, no, those are day for day. And I, I've always asked them, but what authority? Yeah. But what authority do you have to break the Word of God? In chapter 10 of Matthew, the, the, the Scripture, the, the Word of God cannot be broken. How can you interpret one way and go to interpret another to fit your, your counter schemes. Well, that's exactly you know, what they have to do, and most people don't understand this. But you've got to understand in your Bible, uh, for example, a, a metaphor. Uh, look, Jesus said, I, I am the vine, you're the branches. Well, he's not a literal vine. That's right. We're not literal branches. You know? The same thing in this prophecies when we have dragons and we have horns, and we have heads, and we have serpents, and we've got all these things, there is a constant language of the prophets that is being used. And I'm just going to point out right now, if anybody ever wants to read a great essay on this, in, which will help you understand the day for the year and its consistency, and also the allegory and the metaphors that the prophets used, Moses was a prophet. Oh, he yeah. used it. Jesus was a prophet. Right. He used it. Paul, John, they all used it uh, in the uh, Adam Clark commentaries, which many people I know out there are very familiar with. Read, I believe it's 19 pages, Pastor, the introduction of the book of Isaiah written by Adam Clark. It's the most scholastic. It, it will stun you, and it will help you understand how the language of our Bible is mm -hmm. in many things. And I understand build an ark means build an ark. Oh, yeah. All right. But we have, I am, I am the door. You know, well, Jesus is not a literal door. You yeah. know, you're not knocking on wood when you... So it's the same thing in the prophets. And this year for the day is, uh, is what, remember we mentioned earlier in, in the first broadcast that the first Protestant that rejected the year for the day that started swallowing the Riberian futuristic theory of the 70 weeks being broken at the end of the 69th week, the final seven-year tribulation period, and all the baggage they throw there was Samuel Roffrey Maitland. All right? Now, folks, what you might not understand is, uh, again, I challenge you, find me one before 1826, one true Protestant scholar who ever bought 
the counter-reformation doctrine of these Jesuits that were designed to protect the papacy. Uh, one writer wrote, uh, a great historian, uh, quote him, he said, it was then that Dr. Maitland discovered this futuristic view of the revelation as taught by Francisco Ribera from Spain, and he published it just for the sake of interest. Mm. You know, so this interest, and, and he's not the only one. These, these things start multiplying. Scholars start putting their books down. They have contempt. They get tired of fighting and having to stand against the papacy oh, yeah. and things like that. Uh, that's why that's preterism, by the way, is so popular now. Oh, yeah. Why some are going to it, because it gives them, they can bail right out, and, and they don't right. have to deal with Catholicism. Yep. They're cowards. I, I look at, I called one a coward the other day who, who uh, knew better. Um, anyway, we'll get going. Maitland also uh, wrote, uh, and, and, and his influence the great John Nelson Darby. And again, we're not talking about these men's lives and their love of God and their histories and whatever, but you had Darby and the, the, the Plymouth Brethren all getting sucked into this, and I know we're going very fast, and oh, we yeah. mentioned that we're going to elude and we're going to make some accusations here, but we'll back them up in here. But the point I was trying to get to, uh, there's no telling how many of y'all out there have a Schofield reference Bible. I used to have one. Well, guess what? The notes, you know, one of the first oh, great yeah. annotated Bibles where the notes were almost elevated to the, to the glory of actual Scripture, which oh, yeah. was what got us in trouble. But Schofield is a futurist. Schofield was a copulation of Ribera's mm -hmm. futurism. And that, if, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot, brothers and sisters, you cannot get away from that. I, you, it, it's just the way it is. It is true history on how this stuff started evolving. And then you go, and, and I'm not going to go much further on this because I'd like to get back to the day for the year. But and again, it's here. And I'm going to point you also, as the pastor has, and, and his, he's got great books he's written, and this ministry has great sources to where the information's there, and you have no excuse. You know, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman rightly That's dividing right. the word of truth that needs not be ashamed. Um, there's a lot of shame getting ready to play its hand. Well, you know, this may be a strong statement, but we're talking to a lot of ministers. We're talking to a lot of laymen that are watching this program. Study the word of God for yourself. Take this book and read it without your preconceived ideas that has been placed in your head by college professors, Sunday school teachers, even your pastors. Because it seemed as though that uh, after the Schofield Reference Bible came out in 1909, that this, it was like a, a, a Kansas prairie fire and a high wind. Tidal wave. It just yeah. caught on yeah. with everybody. And therefore, when I went to college, and I'm thinking of all the other thousands of ministerial students in these Bible colleges, that's what we were taught. We were taught Darbyism, Schofieldism, which is basically the concepts of the, of the Jesuit priest and that has been modified, tweaked down through the years, and these futurists are still tweaking their their futurism. It's incredible the scenarios uh, they well they're forced to come up with alterations. And oh, scenarios absolutely! Because uh, of the the nightmares, and of course we've had predictors all oh, through, my. and and I, I know we don't even have time to go there in this presentation, but they are they are continually forced. Whereas we talked about in the first session, there's men of God that we could reference and point to that that could lecture kings and prepare them for centuries in advance of what was going to happen. That's right. And they nailed it. A lot of these, I mean, I, I don't want to, to uh, indict their, their walk with right. God, but a lot of the teachers are basically newspaper prophets. They read the, the daily newspaper. You know, there's some uh, event that took place in the Middle East. Well, there's a hundred events that have taken place in the Middle East. But it's like uh, I was reading a book in the, during the first Gulf War, and the author said, this is it. This is World War number three. 
Well, there was a stack of books that they were trying to give away because the prophecy was not true. They make predictions based upon their aspirations for to be great. And if we go back into the 30s, the Antichrist, I understand a lot of preachers, Hitler was the Antichrist. Yeah. Well, he died. Mussolini, then they had to find another one, so they found Mussolini. Then they had to find another one, which was President Roosevelt. Then after, you know, all these men died, they're going to come up with another it's, one. It's, it's, it's John, F, John F. Kennedy was the Antichrist there for a while. Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist. So that's all an aftermath of misinformation concerning the 70 weeks of Daniel. It's, it's the theology, Pastor, uh, of speculation. You know, it was Spurgeon and others who wrote that there, there's a big difference between men of God and women of God who, who search the scriptures diligently, who are at the Berean spirit to search continually to see whether these things be so. And, and, and by the way, have the title of the most noble of all. Because, you know, they're, they're searching and finding out. There's a difference between this and then speculators. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what we've been inundated with is, is speculation. That's what it and, is. And they're, 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 root, they're, they're fruit of the rotten tree of futurism. And, and they continually are embarrassed. And they have to revise. And they, they hope that society forgets. And they go on and on. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's what Luther said, God help us if the terrible curse of uncertainty hits us. Yeah. And these speculators are propagators of the terrible curse of uncertainty because this word, I, I think I read in there one time in the Bible about the more sure word of prophecy. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. That's right. Well, we, they're in this book that Robert has, has put together. There's a chart entitled The 70 Weeks of the Prophet Daniel. And this is the prophetic scale. One day equals one year. I have appointed thee each day for a year. That's Ezekiel 4, 6. Yes. And each prophetic week equals seven years because of the seven days in a week. So you have listed here. Um, you want to you kind of go through this chart. Yeah, let me grab my copy and, here. And well, explain the the beginning dates, the ending dates, and so forth. Well, this is this is the in in a nutshell the theme of what we're we're talking about now, is that the seventy weeks of Daniel had a specific beginning, all right, and it ended specifically. What what we're asserting, and what is being proven and has been proven, has been known that it has run its course. There is there is no future. Seven years. That's right. So, and how in much in depth we can get into. Let me, I, I just lost, can I? Yes, page 80. I just, page 80. All right, here, I'm going to get back to. We have the beginning of the divine time measure. Thank you, Pastor. 457 B.C. Now, we haven't read the prophecy yet. We haven't, uh, again, we just have so much time on this, mm -hmm. this broadcast and this presentation. But what, what is amazing is the vast majority of Bible scholars all know that the prophecy in the Arctic Circe's decree and what was given by the angel to Daniel, they started it in 457 B.C. The clock started ticking to the looking for of Israel's Messiah. And not only do we have the prophecy given straight out, we have it broken into segments of uh, the first segment of 49 years, which covers the uh, years from 457 B.C. to 408 B.C., which totally fulfills the rebuilding structure, the time of Ezra and Nehemiah and the troubled times and whatever the prophet said. So not only is, is God giving us a one linear shot into the advent of the Messiah and then the events of his week, he's throwing in more good stuff just to, to again, assert the credibility of his word upon That's his right. prophets. That's right. The, 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 the word of God is asserted upon the credibility 
of the written prophets. Amen. Buddha can't prophesy. You know, the uh, it, we we could go down the list. Don't give me. I don't yeah. want to get started. But our God prophesies, and it comes to pass. And then we have the time measure going on, and the first uh, another 62 weeks transpired. But the, the total of the first 69 weeks from Arctic Circe's decree, which we prove in this book, and many have. Oh, you yeah. can even go to futurist books, ladies oh, and gentlemen, yeah. and, and I, I don't want to elaborate on that. We don't, we don't have time to have a, a college history lesson right now. It takes us to 27 AD. And if you understand the adjustments of the calendars and how things have happened with the Roman calendar and stuff, just about all affirm that's when Jesus appeared in his ministry. Exactly 69 weeks or 483 day years after the signal given to begin the prophecy. Yeah, that's, right. that's why they are all looking at John the Baptist. Hey, <laughs> are, are you he? Yeah. Or should we look for another? They, that was the stirring there. The, Absolutely. All the, 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 there's so much. And, and again, this was so frustrating in a short presentation. But again, we're going to reference you to the book. Not, not to sell the books, folks. This, this has been a 30-year burden. But uh, I want you to know, you're talking about being liberated, mm -hmm. the new truth of the prophets. Um, so I got us to 27 AD. You want to take it for a few minutes, see where we go? Okay. Yeah. In the book of Mark, chapter number 1, verses 14 and 15, very critical in our understanding of the beginning of the 70th week. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. Absolutely. Was that just something that he pulled out of the air or was it based upon this timeline of Daniel's 70, 70 weeks? The 69th week ended right there and began the 70th week the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. So at 27 AD, Jesus was being baptized by John the Baptist, and Jesus was 30 years old. And how long was his ministry? Three and a half years. Everybody knows that. It has a, a, a basic understanding of Scripture that he ministered for three and a half years. But of course, we have, we have a situation here, but a confirmation of covenant was to be for seven years exclusively to the, well, the Judean tribe. And how can this be fulfilled if we have him you know, being cut off in the midst of the week? See, these are, these are things that are great problems for the futurists. They don't know whether to put Antichrist. They, they, they know, they, they know, folks, don't let them fool you. They know Daniel deals with the point of our Lord up to his crucifixion. Oh, yeah. They know it, but they're so trapped in their scenarios and how they juggle this stuff. Well, what we're going to talk about some more and prove in this book is that, yes, Jesus did confirm the covenant for three and a half years until he, as like Daniel said, was cut off. That's right. He was crucified. He fulfilled the six points that we'll probably review of what the Messiah was to do. This was all, this was not some futuristic Antichrist. Jesus fulfilled all these points that we have yet to even, even touch. But at the same time, his disciples did not spread to the earth and spread the gospel. They remained very exclusively for three and a half years, and I'm going to use the term the Jews for now, as many of y'all understand that, and, and uh, maybe pass we can clarify more things here in a minute. But they restricted the preaching of the gospel for another three and a half years so that the covenant could be confirmed with Daniel's house of people That's right. specifically. And then an event happened. One king, an event, but then another specific event happened, and then they scattered. That's right. And the 70 weeks, the 490 years have run their course. That's right. Completely. And I, I sit in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. When, so when Jesus was baptized by John in the River Jordan, he was 30 years old, his, his public ministry began. 
three and a half years later, he was crucified. Daniel tells us in Daniel 9, 26, shall Messiah be cut off. Cut off. Jesus died in the midst, in the middle of the 70th week. And then there were three and a half years yet to go to the, uh, not only to the stoning of Stephen, but to the ministry of the Apostle Paul, right. where he told the Jews in, I believe it's Acts chapter 13, you have had your chance, you have rejected the gospel, I'm, I am now going to the Gentiles. Well, he, he mentions that, it, why did he mention it was necessary that they get it first? That's right. What was necessary? But what's even, Pastor, even more amazing than this, remember as those three and a half years were transpiring, about three years after the, the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord, we have a, a, a momentous event in the scriptures. It's the martyrdom of Stephen. Yes. And, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, and brothers and sisters, Stephen was killed for uh, giving a history lesson. Yeah. yeah, you want to get in trouble in the church yeah. and in the kingdom of God these days, you give a true history lesson. But great scholars like Eliot and the Hori Apocalyptica, which folks I have read, took me two years to read that, and, and, and other works, they began to look and they said, all right, that's, that's right around three years, but we need to count for three and a half years. Well, lo and behold, we have a situation recorded in Acts. And again, it's all written right here in the, in the book for you. You can go look it up in Acts and whatever. Remember, Jesus had forbidden the disciples to go preach in Samaria. Sure. He said, don't do it. <laughs> so, about six months, I believe it was Eliot and some others, figured historically after the death of Stephen and the martyrdom of Stephen that the Holy Spirit, that final release is there, and Philip, boom, makes his move to where? Samaria. That's right. Now, Amen. and why in the world? And the gospel preached in Samaria. Act, uh, you can look it up in Acts 8, chapter 8, verse 5. Was he being disobedient? Maybe he, you know what I'm saying? And, and see, as we wrap up here, remember on the road to Emmaus when the Lord appeared? Appeared to the disciples? And what did he say? He, he taught them all. Yeah. All concerning him and the law and the prophets. That's right. They knew what was going on. Oh, absolutely. And their hearts leaped and burned with fire. Amen. God bless you, Robert. I want to say, I want to encourage everyone to order this book. We'll send you this additional book with it. If you have not received our magazine, we will send you a copy of our magazine, a sample copy, absolutely free of charge. I want to... Uh, say thank you once again you. and Robert is also available for ministry in your church I would encourage you to call him and receive a great blessing through his ministry God bless you for any material offered on this program or to be a part of this ministry please write or call today we thank you and may God bless you for your response to this end time ministry truth in history where the word of God is not bound